Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 13th of uh, module 3 of a uh, course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, so what we have been discussing so far is that we have been uh, discussing various aspects of auction through the model of uh, game theory and uh, the two kinds of auctions that we have discussed are uh, second price seal bid auction. and first price sealed bid auction. So, today what I propose to do is to look at other sorts of auctions uh, which are prevalent and uh, then uh, end this topic uh, today itself. So, <coughs> one kind of auction which is neither second bid, uh, second price or first price is what is known as all pay auction. In all pay auction, uh, the person who is not getting the object also pays, which means that uh, suppose I have bid B i but B i is less than the highest bid suppose this is B h. In that case I do not get the object, but nevertheless I have to pay this B i. Uh, so, this is a little bit tough on the people who are not getting the object, uh, but this kind of auctions uh, are there. Uh, for example, it may happen that if we can think of any real life example of auc this kind of auction, all pay auction, you can think of uh, various political lobbies uh, which are trying to influence the, uh, the functioning of the government, uh, various business lobbies for example. Now when this business lobbies try to influence the functioning of the government, the decision of the government, uh, maybe they pay, pay bribes to the ministers or or bureaucrats. Now, it may happen that I pay bribes, but uh, the decision of the government does not go in my favor. Uh, so, in that case I pay something which is B i, which is like a bid, bid for the decision to go in my favor. But the, at the end of the day, if the uh, decision of the government does not go in my favor, it is not that I get back this money, which I have already paid to the uh, various functionaries of the government. So, there are some real life examples, real life uh, examples of this all pay auction. Now, if we apply, interestingly, if we apply this all pay auction in case of, in case of the setting of suppose second price auction. then what happens? Suppose this also has this all pay provision. Then what happens is that this second price auction uh, becomes similar to the war of attrition game that we have seen before, except for some uh, few cases. Uh, why I am saying this is that in second price auction, if we have this all pay provision, then what is the payoff of any individual? It is V i minus B i if B i is 
greater than B bar. Remember, B bar is the highest bit of the other place or B i is equal to B bar and i is less than j where j is equal to b bar. So, it may also happen that I uh, beat the highest bit of the other place, but my index which is i is less and therefore, I get the object and in that case my payoff is this much v i minus b i. And it may happen that I do not get the object. In that case, I get 0. This happens if b i is less than b bar, that is my bit is less than the highest bit of other players or or my bit is same as the highest bit of the other players, uh, but uh, my index is more than the indexes of these players who are bidding the highest. In that case also my payoff is 0. Now, look this, this payoff structure is same as the uh, war of attrition payoff structure except for B i is equal to T i. Mm, because what was happening in that case is that, oh sorry, this is equal to minus p i, because when I am not getting the object, I am still paying. So, this was the difference, uh, which was not there in case of second price auction, but right now we have this uh, case of this thing and this should be B bar. Okay. Uh, so, this is the case where I have only two players. If I have only two players, payoff function of each player is equal to Vi, the valuation of uh, his valuation, minus B bar, B bar is the second highest. Uh, if I get the object and even if I do not get the object by, but my index is lower, then my payoff is this much. If I do not get the object, then whatever uh, time I have spent in uh, waiting for the object, in, in, in whatever time I spent in case of water of attrition, but here in case of second price auction, whatever bid I have made, which is given by B i, that is um, my uh, loss for, from this uh, whole exercise because I am not getting the object. So, uh, this is the case and uh, what is important is that this is exactly like the war of attrition game where uh, if I do if I get the object uh, then my payoff becomes V i minus T j here T j is equal to B bar, B bar is the bid of the other player. And if I do not get the object, that is, that is, I give up earlier than uh, his, my rival in case of war of attrition, I lose the entire uh, time that I spent, the value of that time. Here it is minus p i, there it was minus t i. Uh, except the difference is that in case of tie, <coughs> in case of uh, war of attrition, people were getting minus. Uh, sorry, half of V i minus T i. So, that was the case in case of tie, but here we have the object going to the first the person who uh, values the object more. So, tie breaking rule is different here, but uh, besides that this game is same as the game of war of attrition. Now, so this is one interesting thing and the second interesting thing is that if I apply this idea of all pay in case of 
first price auction then what is the equilibrium that emerges from here and the answer is that if I have a first price auction where people have to pay irrespective of the fact that they get the object or not then uh, there is no equilibrium. no Nash equilibrium. And what is the proof? Proof is the following, suppose there is a Nash equilibrium, Nash equilibria now let the bits be different in the equilibria if there are equilibria then they can be of two types either uh, in the equilibrium the bits are different or in the equilibrium the bits are the same let us take the first case that the bits are different. Now, so I have B1, B2 where suppose without loss of generality B1 is greater than B2. Now, this is this a Nash equilibrium, this cannot be a Nash equilibrium. because player 1 who is bidding more will deviate and bid something less. If he bids something less, he can improve his payoff. So, because 1 has a profitable deviation, if he bids less than B1, but more than B2. So, this cannot be a Nash equilibrium because at least one person is having a profitable deviation. Uh, what can be the other possibility? The other possibility is that, that the bids are the same. And suppose the bits are uh, B, B. Uh, can this be a Nash equilibrium? Here I have two possible cases, one is that B is greater than 0 or B is equal to 0. Now, if B is greater than 0, Uh, then who is the person who is getting the object? One is getting the object but uh, is this a Nash equilibrium? Uh, this is not a Nash equilibrium because 2 has a profitable deviation. The reason being here at B B he is paying this player 2 is paying B which means his payoff is minus B. So, this is absurd for him to go on paying this B uh, while not getting the object at all. So, he can uh, at least bid less than B and uh, that is a profitable deviation for, for him. So, this is not an Nash equilibrium.
the last case that is left is, is this a Nash equilibrium that B B and uh, the value of B is equal to 0. Here notice though player 1 is getting the object, the difference between the previous case is that player 2 cannot beat less than this. Uh, so, the previous argument cannot be applied in this case, but here player 2 in this case player 2 can bid more than B and get the object and, uh, and that is going to be profitable because if you remember one assumption that we had taken before at the start is all the valuations are positive. So, whatever be the valuation of player 2 it might be very little, but uh, as long as this player 2 bids more than 0 he can make a positive payoff right now he is making a 0 payoff. So, he, from here also player 2 has a profitable deviation. So, this is not a Nash equilibrium. So, basically we have exhausted all possibilities and so uh, we have not found any Nash equilibrium in case of uh, first price auction where everybody is paying uh, his or her bid. Uh, so, this was the case of all pay auction. Now, we also have another kind of auction which is known as multi unit auction. Here uh, the auctioneer is auctioning not a single good, but different units of a good. So, it may happen that the auctioneer has uh, k units of a good, wh which uh, this k units the auctioneer likes to auction off. Uh, and there are bidders. Now, since there are k units of a good to be auctioned off, uh, a bidder when he submits his bid is not going to quote just one price, but a vector of prices uh, having k elements. So, maybe B1 will look like this B11, B12, B1, k. Similarly, the last person So, in this way everybody is going to submit uh, bids and uh, for a, any unit the highest bid will be picked up and that person who is submitting the highest bid is going to get that unit. So, that is that is very clear. However, uh, it may happen that the price that this person is paying to the auctioneer uh, varies, varies according to different rules of the game. So, there are we are going to uh, discuss only two rules of the game. One is what is known as discriminatory auction and the other is what is known as uniform price auction. Basically, in discriminatory action, what uh, the price the players are paying for the units that they are getting, uh, this model is trying to imitate the model of first price auction. So, for any unit, the person who is getting the unit is going to uh, pay the price which he himself is quoting. So, it is like the first price auction, just we are taking many units. In case of uniform price auction, uh, what uh, we are trying to imitate is the second price auction. 
So, which is the price that the uh, that these people are paying to the auctioneer? Uh, the price that is being paid is the highest among the rejected bids. To elaborate what the idea is, for each unit uh, there is one price which is winning the auction and there are many prices which did not win the did not win, win that uh, unit and there is a highest among those prices. So, this is the highest rejected bid for that unit. Now, if we compare all the highest rejected bids of all units, there will be one price which will be the highest among these highest. So, that is what we mean by the highest among the rejected bids. And this highest rejected bid is the price that all the people who are getting the object is uh, are going to pay. So, the price that the uh, winners are paying in this case uh, is the same, uh, it is uniform that is why it is called uniform price auction. And you can see that it is like the second price auction in the sense that the price uh, is the is not the bid that I submitted, but it is a price which is has been rejected. Uh, but there is a complication here. It may happen that the price that I am paying is more than what I bid for. For example, take this case, uh, this is unit 1 and this is unit 2. In unit 1, player 1 has submitted B11, player 2 has submitted B21. In unit 2, player 2 has submitted a higher bid, bid 2, uh, it is B22 and player 1 has submitted B12. Now, here the highest among the rejected bid is this much, but this bid is higher uh, than the bid that player 2 submitted for this second unit. So, there is this added complication. What we are going to do is to uh, look at one exercise from multi unit auction. Here is the exercise 200 people are willing to wait in line to see a movie at a theatre whose capacity is 100. Denote person I's valuation of the movie in excess of the price of admission expressed in terms of the amount of time she is willing to wait by V i. That is person I's payoff if she waits for T i units of time is V i minus T i. Each person attaches no value uh, to a second ticket and cannot buy tickets for other people. Assume that V1 is greater than V2, etc., etc., uh, greater than V200. Each person chooses an arrival time. If several people arrive at the same time, then their order in the line is determined by their index. If a person arrives to find 100 or more people already in line, her payoff is 0. Model the situation as a variant of discriminatory multi unit auction in which each person submits a bid for only one unit and find its Nash equilibria. Arrival times for people at movies do not in general seem to confirm with the Nash equilibria. What feature missing from this model could explain the pattern of arrivals? So, to translate this story into simple English, uh, there are 200 people, they want to watch a movie, but in that movie theatre the capacity is for 100 people. So, this is capacity 
for 100 people. Uh, so, and uh, the tickets are going to be distributed at a particular point of time. Now, if I come early, then I have a better chance of getting a ticket. And uh, it may happen that I am the first person to arrive at the ticket counter. Uh, so, I will be in the first in the line. So, I will definitely get the ticket. But uh, if there are more than 100 people already in the line and I arrive there, uh, then I will not get the ticket and I will not be able to watch that movie. In that case, my payoff will be 0. <clears throat> and uh, how much people value watching the movie, uh, that varies from person to person. So, the, this is what is being assumed. The, index, the indexes are such that the first person values the movie the most, the second person the second highest, etc. Et uh, and how do I write the payoff then? Payoff is written as Vi minus Ti. There is this valuation from the movie which I get Vi, but I had to stand in the line for some time to get the ticket. So, that is uh, denoted by T i and both these are uh, expressed in the unit of time. So, I do not have any problem of unit, I can subtract T i from V i because they both of them are in time in terms of time. Uh, so, in this setting I have to find out what is the Nash equilibrium action. Remember what is happening is that every person is choosing a t, t is the waiting time. So, larger is t, uh, the less well off you are because this t i is going up, so u is going to go down. At the same time, if I choose a small t, I will not be able to watch the movie because there will be more people already in the line. Uh, so, that is the thing and why am, am I calling it a multi unit auction? This is a multi unit auction because there are 100 units in the sense that 100 is the capacity. This 100 units are sold off and each person is submitting the bid for only one unit. So, he or she is bidding for only one unit and the price that they are paying is in terms of T. Greater is the T less well off they are. So, this is uh, how uh, it can be seen as a kind of auction. Now, we have to find the equilibrium of this game. So, that is uh, more or less it. Uh, to close it, uh, to close this chapter on auction, just one more uh, thing that I wanted to uh, discuss is the following is the case of lobbying. Lobbying can also be seen as auction. What I mean by lobbying is the following. Uh, suppose there are different social groups, maybe business groups, they are wanting the government to follow a particular policy. Uh, the policy which is most beneficial for them. And there might be divergences, I might like uh, policy X to be followed, my rival group might be wanting the government to follow some other policy, maybe Y or Z. In that case, we shall try to influence the government and it may happen that the government is, uh, is in a way is uh, selling this policies to people, whoever is bidding the highest. Uh, which party is bidding the highest, that party is getting his or her policy of choice to be implemented by the government. In that case, uh, can we apply the, the, the models of Nash equilibrium or model of auctions that we have discussed so far? Let us take the following game. <coughs> Suppose there are two lobbies, lobby A and lobby B. 
and there are three policies that can be taken by the government. And the numbers here indicate the benefits that the lobbies are going to get from the policies. So, in short, if X is uh, the government's policy, neither A nor B uh, get anything from this policy. If Y is implemented, then uh, lobby A gets 3 payoff from the policy, lobby B gets minus 100 from the policy. So, it is very bad for lobby B, but little good for lobby A. The opposite thing happens if Z is implemented. Uh, B is getting 3 and A is getting minus 100. Now, what is the rule of the game? What rule government is telling to this lobbyist to follow? And suppose the rule is the first price auction. Uh, which means that each lobby will tell the government how much money it is ready to pay to the government to get its, its favorite policy implemented. Uh, so, if lobby A quotes a higher bid, then lobby B, lobby A is going to implement his policy and in that case lobby B is not going to pay anything to the government because its uh, policy is not going to get implemented. So, that is the setting. Now, the claim is the following, claim is that A will bid 103 for Y, B will bid 103 for Z and that is a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so uh, let us do one exercise on this uh, on this idea of uh, multi unit auction this exercise is called internet pricing i shall write down the question first and then we shall solve this problem.
so, this is the question. <coughs> Let me read the question. A proposal to deal with congestion on inter on electronic message pathways is that each message should include a field stating an amount of money the sender is willing to pay for the message to be sent. Suppose during some time interval each of n people wants to send one message and the capacity of pathway is k messages where k is strictly less than n. The k messages whose bits are the highest are the ones sent and each of the person sending these messages uh, pays a price equal to the k plus 1 th highest bit. Model this situation as a multi unit auction, use the same tie breaking as the one discussed before. Does a person's action of bidding the value of her message weakly dominates all other actions? So, this is like the following multi unit auction. Okay, so, players who are the players n bidders okay, each wants one unit of the of the k units available okay and they they are ha, they have their valuations also so v1 v2 etc etc vn r greater than 0 r their valuations actions actions are nothing but bids b1 b2 bn and finally preferences payoff is maximized okay payoff of player i let us call it u i is equal to v i minus b bar if i <coughs> gets one unit of the k units all right and this will happen if i's bit is not rejected b bar is the highest rejected bit so in this case b i is greater than b bar it can be equal to b bar also or e i is equal to b bar but i is greater than index of the person whose bit is p bar and is denied. So, this, this is the case when i is getting the object or 0, if i is not getting the object. So, in this case his bit is being denied. 
So, this is the this is how it can be seen as a auction game. Now, second part of the question is the following <coughs> does a person's action of beating the value of her message weakly dominates all other actions. So, take the player i for player i b i is her bid and v i is her valuation. Now, let p bar is the highest rejected bit. Now, for let us say v i greater than b bar, okay. if b i is greater than b bar, i's payoff remains at v i minus b bar. This is what he gets. If b i is equal to b bar, but i's index is less then the player who bid p bar then also i's payoff is equal to minus p bar. If p i is less than b bar i's payoff is equal to 0 right. Now, uh, he is not getting the object and what could be the other possibility that b i is equal to v i and this is uh, greater than obviously, b bar. In this case payoff is equal to v i minus b bar and if b i is greater than v i payoff is equal to same as v i minus p bar. So, by looking at all these different possibilities of b i we are taking different values of b i we are seeing that uh, whatever be the value of b i if it is not equal to v i then payoff of i cannot be more than what he is getting by bidding just equal to v i, which means that in this case. So, if v i is greater than b bar Beating b i not equal to v i gives i at most v i minus b bar, which he is getting by beating b i is equal to v i. All right. So, b i is equal to v i weakly dominates other actions. Similarly, we can show v i weekly dominates e 
if vi is less than v bar or equal to v bar. So, uh, this is the proof uh, that if in this case of multi unit auction where a person who is getting the object pays the k plus 1 th highest bid, uh, the valuation of one's, one's valuation of the object weekly dominates over all her other actions. So, this was more or less our discussion of auction theory. What we are going to do in the next lecture, I am going to introduce the topic right now. is known as accident law. So, law and economics is basically is a sub discipline within economics, where uh, what uh, is tried to be analyzed are the effectivity of laws, whether these laws are in line with the economic principles such as efficiency productivity etcetera etcetera. And can we have certain laws uh, therefore, can we have certain laws which are efficient in the economic sense or can the laws be improved. So, here also we are going to law look into a particular sort of law which is known as accident law. So, in an accident law what is the general setting? There are two parties of this uh, of this accident law one is suppose the injurer so this is player 1 who, who will be called the injurer and there is this player 2 who is the injured person let us call him the victim so, to visualize this thing, there can be several examples. What one example could be that a person, a pedestrian is crossing the road and suddenly a car comes and hits him. Uh, the loss that occurs from this accident only is accruing to the victim, that is why he is called a victim. The car owner or the driver is not in at a loss now, uh, he is not. Uh, uh, getting uh, harmed in any way. But now the question is when this accident is taking place there are two sides to the story. It might happen that the injurer was careful in driving whereas the victim was careless he just went into the street without looking at other different directions and that is why the law uh, this, this loss and this accident happened. Or it could be the other way that the victim was very careful in crossing the street, but the injurer, the car driver was rash and that is why it happened, this accident happened. So, can there be a law which apportions, which assigns a kind of care that these two parties should take such that this kind of uh, negligence from each side is uh, minimized and we get a uh, outcome which is efficient for the two parties taken together. So, this is something which we are going to look it, look into in the next lecture. Uh, so, before we finish what we have done in this lecture is that we have discussed the various aspects of auction theory, we have go, gone beyond first price auction and second price auction and we have started discussing what is known as accident loss. Thank you. In first price all pay auction prove that there is no Nash equilibrium. Now remember in first price all pay auction how is it characterized? Uh, everyone <coughs> everyone pays uh, equal to her bid and the highest bidder 
gets the object. Now, here we have to show that there is no Nash equilibrium. How? Uh, let us say B1, B2. Uh, we are talking about two players. Okay. Suppose there are two players and their bits are B1 and B2. Uh, can there be a Nash equilibrium? Suppose there are the bits are such that uh, B1 is not equal to B2. So, this is case 1 and there could be a case 2 where B1 is equal to B2. And suppose when B1 is not equal to B2, let B2 is greater than B1. Now, in this case obviously, player 2 will get the object. and pay P 2, but uh, which means that there is a profitable deviation for player 2 she can bid less than P 2 and still win the object. So, the this thing B 2 greater than B 1 cannot be a Nash equilibrium. So, this case is then ruled out if the bits are different then they cannot be Nash equilibrium. If bits are equal, <coughs> then is there a profitable deviation for one player? Here again, we, sh we shall see that 2 has profitable deviation. This is because in uh, the case where B 1 is equal to B 2, 1 is getting the object. and 2 is paying B 2 without getting the object. So, 2 can bid B 2 greater than B 1 uh, and get the object. in which case her payoff rises. So, we find that none of these two cases first when B 1 is equal to B 2 or B 1 is uh, not equal to B 2 in none of the cases there is an equilibrium. Hence, uh, here no equilibrium exists. Question number 2. So, in question number 2 we are given a, a matrix where the uh, numbers are showing the benefits that these two parties A and B uh, get from each of these three policies x, y and z and we have to show that in a menu auction the equilibrium exists with the following bits 51.530 for A and for B 51.5003. Now, here uh, so these are the bits that are 
we have to prove that they are the equilibrium bits. Now, why they are equilibrium? Because if A bits less in X, uh, then Y gets implemented. And in which case her payoff is even less. Whereas now what he is what he player one is getting is he is paying fifty one point one point five and getting zero, which means he is getting minus fifty one point five. Whereas if y gets implemented, uh, he will get minus hundred. So uh, bidding less for x is unprofitable. Similarly, we can show that bidding less for uh, y is also unprofitable. Okay. If both x and y are less bid less by a, uh, then z gets implemented, which is um, which means that in that case a will get minus 103 as the payoff. So, deviation by a is unprofitable. Similarly, we can show that deviation b is also unprofitable. So, that is it. Mm -hmm.